Hey, what is up guys? Welcome back. So welcome to my step-by-step -step guide for Annihilation 3. I decided to make this guide as realistic as possible for the average player. So I decided to um, basically do it live with you. It's going to be live for me, but it's not going to be live for you. And if I can't replicate it in a run, then I don't think it's a reliable guide. Like if it takes someone a lot of tries to be able to do something, then I don't think it's very, very realistic. You know, in my last video, I was able to do it with only four star units, but I had to have had a lot of failed runs. And if you didn't see a lot of like my challenge mode runs, a lot of them, um, I think for challenge mode, it's okay to basically make it so if you just get one successful run out of like 30 runs, it's, you know, it's still acceptable because you only have to do it once. But for Annihilation, especially if you have to like wait until like for like 300 kills, and then for you to like mess up a timing on a single thing and for your whole entire run to fail because of that, I don't think that makes a very good guide. So I decided to make this guide as easy as step by step as possible that you can basically follow along. And I made it as foolproof as humanly possible using the most budget team and just borrowing a friend's ifrit, okay? So if you, the first step is what you need to do is you need to go into your supports and you need to find someone with an ifrit. And if you can't find someone with an ifrit, then you can go on one of the Arknights discords and um, beg someone for an ifrit. You can probably go on Twitch on stream and beg one of the streamers to add you that has an ifrit. That, that probably would work. Be like, please, I need help. I need, I need your ifrit, you know, and then you'll have an ifrit. So you want your friends ifrit at, to be able to do this. Now, if you didn't know this, for Annihilation, you can actually keep using the same support unit. Your friends list won't refresh after you clear a run. So as long as you can get an effort once, you can do your weekly runs and you know be done with it. It takes a little bit of work to do it manually, but if you want those um, extra, extra gems, you can definitely do it. If not, then just follow my guide, do it once and go back to doing Annihilation 2. You can also do that. You want to do it once to get your weekly cap um, a little bit higher. But besides that, we, that this is, this is the run. Okay, this is the run. So what we're going to do is we're going to, we're, we're actually just going to start it and then I'll explain the units one by one as we're doing it. Okay, as we are actually doing it. Okay, so the first step is to put down your two block vanguard. This can be, the first three steps are fast. You want a two block vanguard for, down first, your AOE sniper, and I'm actually gonna put this sniper over here. So your two, and then you can turn it to two times speed. So put these three units down and then you can turn it to two times speed. Your first unit can be any it can be any two block vanguard that's above four stars. It can't be Fang. Fang will probably die. And this has to be Shira Yuki. Okay, it can't be Meteor, right? The only exception is you're, if you're not using Midnight and you're using like Silver Ash or Lapland instead, then it can be Meteor, right? Because <laughs> um, then you, your, your AoE sniper won't need to do work. Your, your other guy can do work. But if you if you need your AOE sniper to do work, it has to be Shiryuki, okay? And then put your Midnight down. Now this cannot be Frostleaf. It has to be Midnight, Lapland, or Silver Ash. Your ranged two block guard. It, it can be any ranged two block guard. And then after that, you put your other sniper down. The sniper can be any sniper. That's four stars and above. Same with this one. If you're using Je Jessica, Jessica has to be E2 here, or else it's not gonna work. You can also use Cruz and switch the two around, and have Cruz here. Um, but I think Cruz, there's a timing with the bolt up later if you're using Cruz. And if you mess up the timing it, when you're using Cruz, it's gonna be a failed run. So probably use a four star and above sniper, just to make things simple. 
I know it's doable with like three stars. It's just there's there's certain details and timings that are so precise. That's like in the milliseconds. If you're using three stars, that you you don't want to be doing that. After that, you put your push unit down here. It can be Shaw, it can be F Eater. And then your healing tank over here. This can be any healing tank. It can be Neural, it can be Saria, or Gummy. And then single target healer over here. Preferably someone with an active skill, but as long as it's a strong single target healer, it doesn't really matter. And we're just chilling, waiting for the deployment points to regen one last time. And we're gonna place down our last unit. Okay, so once you have this exact setup, then you can just AFK. You can leave this video on in the background, and I'll remind you later to, like you can tab out, go read manga or something, and then I will, <laughs> I will remind you to come back at 300 kills when we actually need to make some moves, okay? Once you have this set up, you can basically just AFK until you're at 300, and it will take around 12 minutes or so. For, it, for that to happen. In the meantime, while we're here, we can talk about each unit and we can also, I don't know, talk about who's top waifu in Arcanites. That would also work. Hmm, who's my top waifu? Definitely Anesthesia. You can see her on the side of my, uh, my screen. I'm just waiting for her to come out. Definitely pull for her when she does. After that, probably... Currently in the game, definitely Shining. Shining Shining is my, my current top waifu right now. That's currently in the game. Originally, I didn't really like Shining. Like she was, I, I originally thought she wasn't waifu material, but she kind of like just grew, grown on me after a while. I think it was her in-game sprite. I think th the thing I love about Shining the most is her in-game sprite. When she does her like healing move and she like waves her little wand, I think that like her, her like healing animation where she waves a little wand, I think it's super cute. So, uh, Shining is definitely top waifu. Funny story is, I actually didn't really like Shining when she first came out or when I first got her. I was actually quite salty when I first got her. Um, I got her from a top operator tag from, from Recruit. And it was a top operator tag, but I also had the healing tag at the same time. So I was trying to get, um, I was trying to get, like, Saria from from that, but I didn't get Saria. I got Shining instead. It was a one out of three chance, and I was a little bit salty. But I got Saria after two weeks, and then I started using Shining, and then you know I s saw her and like saw her in game sprite, and I was like, okay, that's that's like the cutest thing ever. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get her to E two, and then. From that point on, that was, you know, Shining's, Shining's been top waifu. All right, so for for this team specifically, um, some replacement units you, you definitely should want to use is, if you're using like Texas up here, you probably want to use her skill too and just keep spamming it. Because deployment points on this stage isn't an issue. So if you, if you have less deployment points, it doesn't really matter. Um, and you can also use her stun a little bit later to like on emergencies later as well. So, but if you're using Texas with skill one, she actually might die because courier is actually tankier than Texas because of his passive skill. Um, the other thing is your, your snipers, probably you, you want them at E2, preferably at E2. If you can get your snipers to E2, it really helps a lot on the stage. And then everybody else doesn't really matter. They can be E1. My healers are at E1. My gummy's at E2, but she doesn't need to be. Uh, Midnight's stuck at E1. He can never be E2. Sad face. And then Shaw's only at E1 as well. 
for Jitano, she can be E1. She doesn't need to be E2. Um, Shirayuki, I would prefer that she's E2. But for this this type of clear specifically, it, she doesn't need to be E2. She can be at E1. Alright, so we're at 200 now. Just 100 more before we need to make any movements. The reason why it has to be Shiryuki here and not Meteorite is because Shiryuki does R damage and she can just kill the big like heavy guys by herself. And Meteorite does like, when you use her active skill, it breaks their armor, but it like the things have 700 armor and um, the skill will only do around like uh, about like 20% of their health. So it doesn't really do anything to the, the big heavy dudes. So if you're using Meteorite, you kind of have to use something else to make up. Honestly, if you're using like Silver Ash or Lapland instead of Midnight, then you don't actually need, even need an AoE Sniper here. It can be like a... Actually, wait, you still need the AoE Snipers to take out the Bomb Drones. But then then it can be Meteorite, and your Shariki can be at like E1 and low level, and you probably use Platinum here as well, as long as it reaches. It doesn't matter what you use. If you're using like Silver Ash or Laplin. But if you need your AoE sniper to actually be doing work, it has to be Shirayuki. It can't be Meteorite. Alright, so we're just chilling. My nose is itchy. Always happens when I'm recording. So over here, there's going to be, um, not this this wave, the next wave, there's going to be two Naruto runners that run at the same time. And if your snipers and everything are lower level, it's probably time to pop your skills here, right right here, right now. Because you see, you saw Shariki was going really, really low. That was the time to pop everybody's skills just now. Because that was, that was very, very clutch <laughs> without popping their skills. That would have been a very good time to pop all their skills just now. But, um, yes. I didn't need to pop it, but I was super close. I, I, I Next time I should definitely pop my their skills. That was way too close for comfort. I definitely popped their skills right then, right then and there at around like 244-ish. There was like two Naruto runners. That's when you want to pop everybody's skills. Probably would have popped Gavio's skill there as well. I was pretty, I was too close for comfort. Alright, so if you're AFK now, come back. It is time to tab back in. Tab back into the game. We're almost at 300 kills. We're at 288 now. There's one more wave. And after that wave, we will be at 300 kills. There will be one bomb drone at the end. Okay. And that will mark our 300 kills. This guy. So we're just chilling here. Now turn to one time speed, because we're gonna make some moves. We're gonna make some moves. So after this drone dies, you want what you want to do is you want to remove your vanguard up here. And put your tank here. Okay, so this tank, if you're using lower rarity units, um, definitely use Korra. If your everybody else is stronger, it this doesn't it doesn't matter which tank you're using here. Mainly because Korok can block four, and it'll come in handy later. So what I actually did was I actually wrote down like all the times of um, each move that you need to make. So I have like three hundred. Remove courier, put Cora. I'll actually um, put this in the description as well of like each move you need to make. And you should probably pause pause after each each move you make. And think about your next move because it gets very um, very fast at 350 but there's no like millisecond timings in this run okay so that's a good thing about doing doing this there's no millisecond timings and this was the only way you can do it with just an ifrit single carry if you had like silver ash or if you're like using Laplin and Chen then um, it doesn't matter. You can probably place a team down and just with Ifrit, like you probably place a team down and just like AFK the whole entire run. Probably. 
So, yeah, see, Jessica almost died, so she definitely needs to be E2 to be able to handle this drone. If you're using Jessica, if you're using like Exia or Blue Poison, um, Blue Poison, because she's squishy, she also needs to be E2. But if you're using Exia, it doesn't, she doesn't need to be E2 here. So right now we're we're still chilling. You can turn it back to two times speed. We're just we're we're still chilling. There is nothing dangerous at this point. The only thing that's gonna be um slightly dangerous is I actually forgot to remove midnight and put down courier. Make sure you do that. <laughs> Around three thirty. Make sure you don't forget. So the important thing over here is you want to make sure you don't use any of your active skills on these two waves, these Junkman waves. Even the last one, with the exception of Korra skill if, you have, if you're using Korra here, um, you can use your tank skills, but you don't want to use any, anybody's skills. So when these two drones spawn, you want to kind of slow it down back to one time speed and you want to chill. At 340, these two drones will spawn. And you just want to, you, you want to basically wait until your snipers kill the drones. And the moment that Jessica kills this drone, you're going to remove her. You don't need her anymore. The moment she kills it, and you're going to put Ifrit up top to help deal with the next Junkman wave. And once the top drone dies, you don't need your top sniper up here anymore. And then you can put your Jatano down, like this. Okay? And right now, the moment that um, Midnight is ready again, the moment that your your Midnight or Silver Ash or Laplin or whatever ranged guard you're using is ready again, you can remove your, um, your Vanguard from behind your tank and put your ranged guard facing down. And your ranged guard will be able to hit these units. You're waiting for these two to stack up and then you can push them down with Shaw at three, um, 347. So over here, once we're at this point, we can basically just chill. There will be one la last, the moment this th this dude spawns, you want to immediately retreat Ifrit. At 347, the moment that this big last, last butcher dude spawns, you want to retreat Ifrit immediately. So we're, we're going to retreat Ifrit, and then it's going to get to, um, get to our Korra. And we're just chilling. My guys are actually pretty strong, so I didn't need to um, use Korra's active skill. So at this point, you want to make sure your Midnight skill, your Shirayuki skill, and your Jatano skills are ready. If they're ready, then we're, we're good to go. All right, and the moment that guy dies, you can remove Korra. You don't need Korra here anymore. We'll need her for later, okay? Well, we need the um, unit limit that Korra gives. So at 350, um, you can pause the game. You can take a deep breath because we're about to uh, begin. Okay, this is basically when the level actually does begin at 350 is when it actually gets relatively um, difficult. So these big heavy dudes with hammers will spawn. And once they get into the attack range of Shirayuki, you want to pop her skills. So you want to highlight Shirayuki and you see this guy walking up. So the game's going to slow down. And the moment he gets into range, you pop her skills. You, you can do it too early, but you whatever you do, don't do it too late. You don't want to do it on the second attack after this guy comes into range, because Shiryuki is going to target this guy first. And you need her to land one of her um, attacks with her active skill on against the top guy. Okay. So you want to make sure you turn it on early and not too late. Now, after you do that, pause your game. Any time that I pause, you definitely should pause. Because there's a reason why I'm pausing. Because there's going to be some um, clicks that I need to do later on. So the next move is down here, Jatano. You need Jatano to activate her skills once these two get into range. Okay, And ideally, you want to do it as early as possible when the second guy comes into range so she can hit both of them. So the way you do that is you wait for the first guy to come into range. And once he passes this block, once he moves his other foot, you can activate it. 
and then pause the game after Gitano because we're going to make another move after. So have your sniper ready, your stronger sniper, whichever sniper that you have, you want to use the stronger one for this. So there's going to be these drones that come over here. There's a drone up here. And you want to put a sniper up here to take care of this drone. Now, if your sniper is lower level, you want to wait for this crossbow to shoot first before you put your sniper down. But if your sniper is higher level, then it doesn't matter. You can just put your sniper down right away. So your sniper is going to take a hit from the bolt because you know, I put it down before the bolt shot. You can put it down after the bolt shoots if your sniper is lower level to avoid this. But for me, it doesn't matter. And right now, I'm waiting for Shiraiki's skill to end. And I'm also waiting for Jitano to kill these two. And I'm also waiting for Meteor to kill this. Whatever happens first, um, you do something accordingly. So the moment that um, the moment that Meteor takes this thing down, you want to immediately retreat Meteor and then pause the game. So the next thing we're looking for is Jitano to kill these two, and then we're going to retreat Jitano and we're going to put a sniper down to take care of the, this drone. That's going to fly over later, okay? And right now, Ifrit should almost be ready. Mine's at 2.5 seconds. And you want to put Ifrit facing down to help Midnight deal with this top guy. At the same time, um, Shariyuki's skill will just be just about to end. So you can remove Shariyuki once she does her last and final attack and put Perfumer or whichever AoE healer you have facing up. So her skill has ended. Um, she's going to do one last attack. I'm going to let her do one last attack. There's a lot of movements here. So I can remove her. I'm going to pause the game. And then my right now my Ifrit is ready. And my Jitano I can also remove as well. And this guy's coming into range. So what I'm, there's a lot of things I need to do. Um, the highest priority is actually to remove Jitano and put down... Um, remove Jitano and put down an AoE Sniper. That's the highest priority right now. So I'm going to remove Jitano. I'm going to put down a sniper. I'm going to pause the game. Now this guy's coming into range. Before he gets into range, you want to put Ifrit down. You want to activate your midnight skill, have Perfumer facing up. And then the last thing you want to do is you want to have, your, your Vanguard should be ready to block this Junkman walking um, down. Once that happens, this um, setup is complete and we are just chilling. And then you can have your Shaw push this guy down. And we are definitely chilling. Alright, so we should be at um, three, 365. That's when we'll do what make one last movement. Um, the, basically, the last movement is. Once this drone comes into range over here, you, you want to put down a sniper to deal with this drone. So we're going to remove um, Gaviel and we're going to put down our Meteor once our Meteor is ready over here. Okay. And it should happen at around three, um, 365-ish. And once this drone flies into range, you also want to activate your healer skills because there will be a little bit of um, pressure at that point. So it'll be, a, it'll be a pretty good idea once this drone is coming into range to activate your healer skills, just to relieve some of the pressure. So we're gonna, remove, we're gonna activate Perfumer skill, we're gonna push this guy down with Jaw, and then once this guy makes an attack, I'm gonna activate Gavio skill, just to give one bur big of burst heal before I remove her and then put down Meteor to deal with the drone. And then Ifrit also did a bit of damage to the drone before this drone flew by. So I was able to do some damage to it. And then at this point, um, at this point you no longer need Korya here. You can you could have actually replaced him earlier with Korra, but it wasn't like really, really necessary because Ifrit does a lot of damage. But replacing him with Korra will definitely definitely help. It's kind of not really needed, but it's a good idea. It's just better than nothing. And then at this point, you can chill. That is basically it. You have completed the level now. Once once you're at this setup, then you can't lose.
this is like the final setup. Once you have this final setup ready, then we just chill. We just chill until the end. There will be one last um, movement at 395 if your units aren't high enough level to do enough damage. If I was like using blue poison here, I probably wouldn't have need to make this extra move at 395. Basically, there's a this um, one of the heavy dudes that's going to spawn, not this one, the one after, is going to stun your Korra, and it's going to allow a unit to run past. But at that point, you no longer need Shaw, and you'll have your Shiryuki ready. So you can actually, after Shaw pushes the last unit that she needs to push at 395, you can actually remove Shaw and push Shiryuki over here to deal with the, the, the unit that's running by at the very end. Oh, it's, it's not this guy. It's actually the boss that stuns um, Korra, I think. Because this guy dies before he can stun. Alright. So there'll be one more unit down here that Shaw will need to push. We're just chilling. There's not much to do. We're just chilling a bit. Okay, so th this boss um, is going to have a little bit more HP. Which means it'll, it will stun Korra later, but will be caught by, uh, this is 395, Shaw pushes the last unit. I can remove and push Shiryuki down over here. Help do some damage to the boss as well as um, do some damage to this guy. So he's gonna stun Korra now, which will allow this guy to pass, which is a bad idea. But then since you have Shiryuki down here, um, you can deal with him before he gets, gets here. But if you're, if your sniper that you're using in this slot is stronger, or your AOE or your range guard is stronger, then it will kill that unit before it can run past Korra. So it all depends on the unit that you're using. That is it. 400 runs. Oh shit, I wasn't supposed to save this. Oh crap, it's saved. Oh shit. Oh my god. Oh. I think I just wasted 25 sanity doing that. Anyways, um, that is pretty much it. That is the run for with Ifrit. This is definitely the strategy I recommend for like most players. It did take half an hour. It was pretty, pretty intense. But that is that is pretty much it. So, anyways. Um, if you have any questions, be sure to leave them below. Hopefully I explain everything clearly and hopefully this makes a pretty good like follow along step by step guide that you can use each time you're trying to do this. Or if you just want to do it once and go back to Annihilation 2, you can definitely do that as well. Um, there, there was a lot of movements at around the 350 mark for this level, mainly because I was only using 4 star units on this run. If you have like Silver Ash or Lapland, or if you're using like um, Aya, Aya Fetla instead of like, instead of another sniper, <laughs> like you probably could have just volcanoed <laughs> anything that was coming by as well. Um, on my main account, I actually use Aya with Ignite or Ignition in order to kill the, basically do um, Jatano's job. I just use AO with Ignition to do J Jatano's job. Um, I do have her Mastery 1 with on Ignition, which is why she was able to do it. I think you do need Mastery 1, because it if you have AO Mastery 1 with Ignition, it saves 3 charges instead of 2. So that, that makes the difference. Um, so yeah, you, either you can use Jatano or you can use an AO with um, Mastery 1 on, on her second skill. Or... You could probably use Aya with... I don't know if the timing will work very well with her Volcano. It probably would be safer to just use Ignition on this stage. Um, you can all, If you use Silver Ash or Lapland instead of Midnight on that slot, then that will probably work better because they do pretty insane damage. And Silver Ash, there's a lot of things you can do with Silver Ash, but basically if you do... If you use like whatever um, you're doing with Midnight on the stage, but use Silver Ash instead, then you can probably just not even remove a lot of the units and do a lot of swapping around. 
because his true server slash can take can handle the drones, meaning you don't have to do that move where you put the sniper up top. Um, it can it deals more damage than the armored units, so it can cle basically cleave down the heavy armored units, um, and cleave down the casters and cleave down the casters on like two lanes. It doesn't matter like what you're doing if you have like silver ash e2 plus ifrit i think i think this will be super super easy i might actually do that on my main as well like do silver ash plus ifrit so if people have one of those two they can just borrow the other one and have like a really really easy run um but i don't have my silver ash raised that, that, that might be an issue but anyways if you have any questions, make sure to leave them in the comment below. Um, I will try out more more runs of of um, Annihilation Three, and then I will post them later on if I find any like really good runs. So be sure to subscribe to catch that. But anyways, that is this is my guide for Annihilation Three. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.